Welcome to Solid Rock Ministries Be Authentically You video series. My name is Sharon and I am excited that you have decided to join us for video number 20. Wow, I can't even believe that I have produced 20 videos this year and there's more to come. Before we get into today's message, I just really want to encourage you to listen to the videos all the way through. The, the revelation of the Lord builds and he wants to say something specific to you through these videos. And so I just want to encourage you to take the 20 to 40 minutes that it takes to really get the full revelation of what God's speaking. And then secondly, I really would encourage you to like us and to share these videos. It is one click. That's it. And it would greatly enhance our ability to spread this message out to a, a bigger audience. All right, housekeeping's done. Thank you once again for joining us. Today is the 20th video, as I said, and in our Be Authentically You video series. This is phase three. And this, in this phase of these videos, I have been sharing with you about the promises or benefits associated with Jubilee. We're in a season of revelation. From Passover to Pentecost, that's when Jesus visited the, uh, his disciples and the people and began to teach them about the kingdom of God before he ascended to the earth. This is the time when great revelation can be received and you can move into new areas of your life. And so this season, it biblically is called counting of the omer that's what the uh, god called it and told his people to count up from one harvest which was passover which it, for us it was jesus christ coming as our savior and lord and our jubilee through pentecost when we understand in our church world now that that's when the church was birthed to go out into all the world and spread the gospel of the kingdom so this is an incredible time and every year now for, I don't know, probably seven or eight years, I've been doing something called Counting the Omer, a 50-day a, a podcast devotional uh, to help people navigate through this transitional time because we can step into greater things in this season. And today, uh, this week, as I begin to ponder and pray about this video number 20, uh, I, was, I felt like 20 was significant. And then I heard the Holy Spirit say, look up the meaning of the number 20. Well, I don't know if you know this, but uh, numbers have biblical meanings to them. In Hebrew, this number 20 is represented by uh, a, a, the palm of the hand. And there's always a pictograph that comes with the Hebrew numbers and letters. In this pictograph, for this number 20, is a covering. It means to cover, to cover over, to protect. It also means, 20, a complete or perfect waiting period. Redemption and expectation. And, and as I read that, I just felt so impressed by the Holy Spirit. And he began to speak to me and say, it's time for redemption to manifest and expectations to be realized that redemption is also associated with the prophetic word. We see that in the scripture in Ezekiel 47 and other places, that prophecy is redemptive. In other words, sometimes we, get, we miss the mark and we get off track of the plan and purpose of God for our lives. Prophetic words are a blueprint I like to call they give us nuggets or snippets of what our destiny in God could be. So we need to partner with the Lord to see our prophetic words come to pass. So God is saying right now, we've come to a fullness of time. And in this Jubilee season, God wants to uh, bring things forward in our lives and he wants us to deal with some demonic forces. That's what this whole week's been about. This week of the Jubilee, 
promise has been vengeance. Week number five, vengeance. And it says in, his, uh, in the Bible, in Deuteronomy, that vengeance is the Lord's and recompense. God wants to bring not only vengeance or avenge us against our enemies, but he wants to bring recompense of the things that we've lost in this last season. That's what he's after. That's what he's doing. So what I want to do today is just kind of give a recap I'm not going to do a, a, an extensive teaching because I want to be able to kind of let you know about these six demonic spirits because that's what we've been looking at this week. God led me to do this week on the vengeance of God, but around him taking a vengeance against some demonic forces that have been bombarding all of our lives in this last season to keep us stuck in a place and not moving forward into the fullness of what he has for us. So, number 20, redemption and expectation. That God wants to put a covering over you and your house. This reminded me of Isaiah 4, verses 6, uh, verse 4 through 6. And I'm going to read it. It says, after Yahweh purges the blood of Jerusalem, from, from its midst by the spirit of judgment and the spirit of burning. We're seeing that happening. God's doing some, some stuff in the earth realm right now in our own lives to burn up some stuff and to bring judgment against some things in our lives that have been causing us to be stuck. Then it says, the Lord will create over the whole area of Mount Zion, his church, his Israel, and over her assemblies, her houses her houses of worship, a cloud by day, even smoke, and the brightness of a flaming fire by night. For over all the glory will be a canopy. And then it says this, there will be a shelter, which is the word sukkah, to give shade from the heat by day and refuge and protection from the storm and rain. That's what the Lord wants to do for you and I in this season. So during this week, uh, as we've been looking at the vengeance of the Lord, as I said, we've been looking at six demonic forces. Five of them are contained in Joshua 10. I would encourage you to read that. And the other, the last one, the Midianite spirit, is revealed to us in um, Judges 6 and 7. I would encourage you to read that as well. But this is what Deuteronomy 32, 35, and 36 says. Vengeance is mine and recompense. And he goes on to say, For the Lord will vindicate his people and will have compassion on his servants when he sees that their strength is gone and there is none remaining bond or free. Does this describe you in some way? Is your strength gone? Do you feel like there's nothing remaining in your life? That you've lost so much over this last season? How are you going to ever recover everything? Well, friends, I'm here to tell you that the vengeance of God and the recompense of the Lord is what's going to bring back the things that you've lost. And it's going to help you and I get rid of some demonic forces that have been keeping us in the places that we're at. There's three keys, though, we need to understand about the vengeance of God. First, the very first key is God is the avenger, not you or I. Demonic spirits are our problem, <laughs> our enemies, not people. And three, we need to leave the vengeance to the Lord. For God says he will fight for us, but we must let him do the battle when it comes to vengeance. We have a part to play. Matter of fact, we have three distinct things that we need to do to partner with God to see these enemies routed in our lives. Are you willing to take time to do it? I hope so. I really hope that you want to change and that you want to come into the fullness of who God created you to be, to be authentically who God made you. Okay, six demonic spirits. Before we go into that, I want to say that the Lord is shifting things in your life. 
in my life. He has been for the last few years. He's shifting and changing things in the church universal and in the nations of the earth. He has given each one of us a path of destiny, a path of prosperity that brings about our true identity. But one thing we must always remember, Satan, the devil, will always stop. Seek to stop your forward momentum from your full identity coming to pass. He will always seek to stop our path to fullness. Therefore, we must be willing to deal with the enemies that oppose us. As I said, God said he would take the vengeance, but we have to work with him. We're his divine partners here on earth. So we have to recognize these demonic spirits operating in our lives and then be ready and willing to rid ourselves of their intrusion into our life. The Lord tells us he will be our avenger. Psalms 35, 1 through 6 says, Contend, O Lord, with those who contend with me. Fight against those who fight against me. Take hold of buckler and shield and rise up for my help. Draw also the spear and the battle axe to meet those who pursue me. Say to my soul, I am your salvation. Let those be ashamed and dishonored who seek my life. Let those be turned back and humiliated who devise evil against me. Let them be like chaff before the wind. With the angel of the Lord driving them on, let their way be dark and slippery with the angel of the Lord pursuing them. So here we see God is our avenger. He's going to contend for us. His angels get in uh, working with us. And as we release God's word, his angels get released and they begin to battle on our behalf. See, in the natural, an avenger is someone who retaliates for a wrong done or perceived done to him or to someone he loves. But God is the avenger. He wants to inflict punishment upon his enemies due to a wrong done to his people and to his kingdom cause. The Hebrew word for avenger is goal, and it means to redeem, to ransom. And it has to do with Jesus, our kinsman redeemer. Okay, Jesus is coming to battle on our behalf. Angels are working with us. We need to understand this. In Joshua 10, there are actually 12 kings that create an alliance, a confederacy, if you will, to work together and fight against the children of Israel, Joshua and the children of Israel, to stop them from moving into their promised land, their destiny, if you will. So God says in Joshua 10.10, 10, the Lord routed the enemy. Do you want the Lord to rout your enemies? Well, I hope so. I sure do. It says, as far as Makeda. Makeda means a place of shepherds. Bill Burns, the author of Five Kings, writes, quote, These five kings are rulers desire to establish a place of rule over God's people. These their desire is to become the shepherds over the Lord's flock through spiritual influence. They desire to replace the spiritual influence of the shepherd, Jesus Christ, and this is how they plan to do it. The word Makeda is, means herding to drive by force to a designated place. That's what these evil forces are seeking to do, to drive us by force and get us in a place where we are trapped, where we can become slaughtered, either naturally or spiritually, no longer moving forward into the fullness of what God has for us. But God said in Joshua 10, 8, that he would fight for us. The Lord said to Joshua, do not fear these demonic forces, these kings, for I have given them into your hands. Not one of them will stand before you. And then we see that Joshua worked with the angels to get some results of victory. In verses 11 through 13 in Joshua 10, it reads, As they fled the enemy before Israel, while they went at the descent of Beth Haran, the Lord threw stones from heaven. 
It says large stones. The Lord threw large stones from heaven. I love that. Then it says, Joshua spoke to the Lord and in the sight of all of Israel saying, this is his decree. O sun, stand still at Gibeon. O moon in the valley of Ajalon. So the sun stood still and the moon stopped until the nation avenged themselves of their enemies. You see, we have a part in avenging. <clears throat> God says we are to do our part and God will do his part. So what are these six demonic spirits? I'm just going to give you an overview. If you would really like to hear this full week's messages, you can go to my website at www.solidrock.org or you can go to my Facebook, Counting the Omer Facebook group. I have an audio recording and the download of the devotional for you. Take advantage. Get free. I don't have time to go into real detail about these demonic spirits. But the first one represents a spirit of oppression. It operates by releasing confusion, which means in the Hebrew, disgrace, dishonor, reproach, shame. In our language, in the English, it means to an inability to think clearly. You get confused. You feel dishonored. You feel shame. It operates through oppression and leads to fear, poverty, confusion, and defeat. Do you feel confused? Do you feel defeated? Do you have fear? Are you afraid you're going to go into poverty? This is how this spirit of oppression operates. It seeks to steal your peace. It, seek, it seeks to steal our relationship with Jesus, the Lord of righteousness, because the name of this king is Adoni Zadik, Zadik, and it, ha, it has two meanings, Lord of righteousness and Lord of justice. Literally, it's the opposite. It's, op it's the example of the Antichrist spirit that's working against the, the church in this hour and trying to take out God's people. And Jesus is the antidote, relationship with him and his people. This spirit wants to rob you of peace. And the antidote is shalom. You know, shalom is made up of two Hebrew words, vav, which means authority, and the word mem, which means chaos. God is saying we can have authority over the chaos in our lives. Shalom means wholeness, completeness, soundness, health, safety, and prosperity. And it's, it carries with it the implication of preeminence. God's shalom is preeminent. It should take, take over. And any area of confusion or fear or doubt that you have, I decree over you that God is shalom. He is your shalom. He is your refuge. I command doubt and fear, confusion, oppression, and worry to be under your feet to leave you now. The next spirit or king that we looked at was Haram. And this king represents a religious spirit. A religious spirit drives people to, into performance, into pleasing uh, others uh, to perfect themselves. A religious spirit always resists going further in God, the warfare needed. It's, it's got a, you got a works mentality and it leads to exhaustion, <clears throat> excuse me, weariness and broken relationships. You know, uh, we, a lot of times the, those of us in the, in the apostolic and the prophetic movement can say, oh, we don't have a religious spirit. You know, that's the other guys, you know. No. If you think you have to pray so long, you have to do so many, you know, hours of prayer, hours of Bible study, you got to make the proper decree, you got to use the flag rightly, you got to release the sound shofar just so many times. All of that can lead to 
a religious spirit. Because when we put us doing something to attain the promises of God, then we can we have a tendency to get into a religious spirit. We have a part to play in everything that manifests in our lives. But if we get overly concerned that I'm not doing enough, I'm not doing enough, I'm not doing enough, and then we feel like we have to do, 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 do to make something happen, fear sets in, confusion sets in, that's the spirit of religion trying to come in and take your joy. It's a mindset. And it wants to substitute the activity of the power of the Holy Spirit. The title of that day's message this week was Religious Spirit or Spirit of Power. Those are our choices. Do you want to walk in the religious spirit or do you want to walk in the spirit of power? And the key is right alignment because part of what this Haram was about. He was the king of Ebron, which means association, and it had to do with covenant. It represents covenant. So in other words, being in right alignment with God, of course, first and foremost, but then with his people, vertical, I mean horizontal. We got this vertical, but we got horizontal. We have to be in right relationship with other people. You need me, and I need you. That's how the body of Christ works, walking in covenant with one another. This, this spirit will try to bring you into relationship with religious-minded people to get you to start doing works, walk in legalism. You know, legalism is doing the same thing over and over again, even if it's a certain prayer, or releasing a certain decree, or you know, showing the, show, blowing the shofar at a certain time, a certain way. All that can become religious. But it also seeks to get us out of God's timing for our life and from receiving present truth that he is revealing. God reveals present truth through me. I have an Issachar anointing. And when I release these words, these are, these are, are, pow they are powerful. And I don't mean to sound boastful, but I know that these words are powerful and they're meant to bring you freedom. They're meant to bring me freedom. When I release this word, I get blessed. I deal with my own issues because we all have them. So the key, right, right relationships, right alignments, but also to not judge by the sight of our eye or the hearing of our ear. You see, Isaiah 3 tells us that Jesus did not judge in the, by the natural means. He judged by the Spirit. And he wants us to judge by the spirit also. So this spirit of religion operates by driving people into doing this or doing that, getting overly concerned about your performance in order to please God, to get your prayers answered, and to please others. It stills joy. It stills right alignments, covenant relationships. It stills us from hearing the word of the Lord from others. It seeks to replace Holy Spirit because it denies the power of God. We see that throughout the scriptures about the religious spirit. The antidote then is fellowship with the Holy Spirit and with the people of God. Holy Spirit, people of God. I declare over you that you're gonna walk by the Spirit of God, not by religious works. I say you're gonna choose the things of the Spirit not the natural mind. You're going to choose to align with, with people in this hour. What ministry are you aligned with? You need to be aligned with a ministry. Who are you aligned with? It's important. I didn't say who are you going to church with. I said who are you aligned with? It's good to go to church, but you need to be in a right alignment with an apostolic or prophetic ministry in order to have the fullness of who you are come forth. Okay, the next spirit. The king's name was Param, and he was from Jamuth. His name means like a wild ass. <laughs> and it, he represents the spirit of besiegement. This spirit aims to keep you wild, unbridled, and too proud to submit to true spiritual authority. 
which can lead to isolation. It represents stubbornness, refusing to be associated with other believers, thereby keeping you from the place God would have you align. Jamuth means heights, and it represents pride. Pride will keep you from your place of destiny because you don't want to submit to anyone else. Don't allow this spirit to bring you into isolation. Come out of the cave. Come out of the cave. Align with the Holy Spirit, God the Father, God the Son, and align with his people. The spirit of besiegement leads to barrenness, poverty, isolation, and death. It seeks to produce self-importance, becoming an island unto yourself. It steals destiny. The antidote, submission to the will of the Father, coming out of isolation into fellowship with the Holy Spirit and with others. So I declare over you, I call you out of the cave of isolation. I call you out of places of pride. I call you out of place of besiegement into walking with the Lord God Almighty and with his people, the body of Christ. The next king was Japhi, king of Lachish. His name means shining or show yourself. And Lachish means invincible. It represents a spirit of blindness. This spirit tries to get us to shine the light on ourselves, to demand our rights. And when we do that, we take the, the glory for ourselves. We lose the ability to receive revelation from God. This spirit can darken our spiritual understanding, bringing a lack of joy and a feeling of bondage. We see this demonic force very active in the earth today. Everybody's demanding their rights. Give me this. Give me that. It's heard throughout the land, even among God's people. The desire to be seen above others brings envy, jealousy, and self-seeking, which brings confusion in every evil work, it says in James. The root of this demonic spirit is also pride. And pride comes before a fall, we find in James. God says he resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. So, this spirit will lead to blindness, which produces pride, which produces a fall in your life. It seeks to get you to shine the light on yourself and demand your rights. It seeks to steal God's glory. The antidote is shining the light of the Lord on everything that you do, giving him all the glory and recognizing if you have any pride in your life and saying, get out, get out, get out. I don't want any pride in my life. I'm not better than anyone else. I have my part. You have your part. So I declare over you today that you're choosing victory and you're choosing humility, that you will not take the Lord's glory. You will not walk in that prideful spirit. I'm better than the next guy. Why didn't they choose me to do that? Uh, I should have been the one that got to go to that particular job, do that particular thing, have that ministry in the church. My rights, my rights. You're going to give all the glory to the Almighty God. The next king was the King Debur, King of Eglon. His name means speaker and sanctuary. He represents the spirit of Christus criticism and accusation and this spirit works with the accuser of the brethren or the sons of Belial like we see in 1 Kings 21 where, where Ahab stole and killed Naaman for his vineyard. You know the vineyard represents the kingdom of God, the people of God, the household of God, the fresh wine of the Lord being poured out. Ahab saw how beautiful it was. He wanted it it says he got so sullen because he tried to buy it from uh, uh, Namath and he said no. He tried to give him another field and Namath said no, I won't give you my inheritance. <clears throat> Excuse me. So it says Ahab went into his room like a little child and began to become sullen and became oppressed and depressed. And, his, and he wouldn't eat any food. And Jezebel, 
you all know about Jezebel. That was his wife. She came home and she saw him lay in his room, all depressed, sullen. She said, what's the matter with you? Why won't you eat? And he said, oh, Naaman won't give me my vineyard. Don't give me his vineyard. She said, you are the king. Get up and take it. And then she said, I will get it for you. So she set several men called sons of Belial, who worked with the accuser of the brethren, brought false accusations and criticism against Namath among the leaders in the city. Namath got killed and they took his vineyard. That's what this spirit is after, to take your vineyard, to take your place in the kingdom of God through criticism and accusations. We work with this spirit. We have to be very careful because it speaks against the sanctuary and the household of God. He wants us to partner with the enemy, bring false accusations, lies against people. He, sometimes it's even true things that we want to say, but we're not to, we're not to do that. We're not to go there and speak evil of people. We're supposed to speak words of edification, comfort, and strength. This enemy seeks to stop prophetic revelation from coming forth regarding your inheritance, from being released. It wants to stop prophetic revelation from being released, and it, or it wants to release false prophets in the land. We saw this spirit in operating big time after the 2020 elections. Many people were coming against the prophets of God because of things that they spoke. Whether they were right or not, that spirit of Belial, that accuser of the brethren, was released in the land and it has yet to be fully removed. God's going to deal with it. The word Eglon means calf-like, a bullock, and it represents one who attacks others through the use of words of criticism, accusations, and lies. This spirit opposes the children of God seeking to stop them from possessing their inheritance, stopping us from hearing the voice of God and hearing the voice of God from others. It leads to criticism, accusations, and stagnation. It seeks to get you to partner with the accuser of the brethren. It stills God's voice, his revelation from coming forth, and your inheritance from manifesting. The antidote is choosing to speak words of life, not partnering with the enemy, speaking ill against people. It's embracing God's present truth released through his servants, the prophets. If you have a problem with prophets and prophetic people, this is the spirit that's operating and I'm, you need to repent and ask God to heal your heart and your wounds for maybe you've been wounded by a prophetic person. God understands that, but we got to be careful that we don't speak words of accusation and criticism because it only stops you from manifesting the fullness of who you are. So I declare over you that you are not going to allow criticism and accusation to be your portion, that you're going to speak words of life, words of blessing, and that you're going to not partner with the accuser of the brethren that you're going to walk with the greater body of Christ. You're going to say, Lord, I want to receive present truth. I want to hear what the prophets are saying because it says that we, it, 2 Chronicles 20, 20, if we believe the Lord God will be established, if we believe his pros, pro, prophets, excuse me, we will prosper. Do you want to prosper? I do. If I want to prosper, I have to be willing to hear the word of the Lord through his prophets and prophetic people. Okay, last but not least, the sixth demonic spirit that we looked at this week was the Midianite spirit. This word comes from the word Midian, which means strife, brawling, contention, or contentious, to coil, to have discord. It represents seduction to remove you from your path of prosperity. God himself said he would take vengeance on the Midianite spirit in Numbers 3.12. The Lord wants his people to develop a harvest multiplication mentality. This mentality appears in the first chapter of the Bible when God said, Be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, 
Multiplication and harvest is our portion and is for his kingdom. In the beginning, the serpent sought to derail multiplication when he said to Eve, did God really say? The enemy still says that a lot. Did God really say that about you? Did he really give that prophetic promise? Did he really say those things? Does he really want to do that? Yes, he does. And doubting the word of the Lord immobilizes us and causes us to open the door to a Mennonite spirit. This spirit will mess with your harvest, with your finances. It seeks to stop fullness from coming into your life. We see the Mennonite spirit talked about in Judges 6 and 7. I'm going to read a few verses with you. Chapter 2. 6 of Judges 3 through 6 says, And so it was, when Israel had sown, that the Midianites came up against them with the Amalekites, and they encamped against them and destroyed the increase of the earth, that means their harvest, and left no sustenance in Israel, neither sheep nor ox nor ass or donkey. For they came up with their livestock, their tents, they were like locusts in, multipl in multiples. Both they and their cattle, the camels, excuse me, were without number. Their livestock, their tents, their camels, they were like locusts, it says. They came to destroy the land. They came to steal the harvest. And Israel was brought very low because of Midian. And the children of Israel cried out to the Lord because of their harvest being stolen. We need to cry out to the Lord in this hour from our harvest being stolen. I come against that Midianite spirit. You know, the Amalekite spirit seeks to ambush us against forward movement. It intercepts miracles and breakthroughs and opposes our advancement in all facets of our destiny. So you see, the Malachites take the harvest, and then the, the Malachites, the work together, they set ambushes. How many of you have been ambushed when you begin to move forward, and all of a sudden this Amalekite and this Midianite spirit comes in, and then you have to start all over again? I have. It intercepts miracles. Do you need a miracle? Breakthroughs and opposes our advancement in every facet of our destiny. This spirit represents seduction to move you from the path of prosperity. Midian also aligned with Balaam to seduce God's people. This is the desert spirit that robs at the time of harvest and multiplication, the time of prosperity. Normally the spirit will manifest when we are on the verge of breakthrough. Strife and confusion begin to hit us, and we lose the increase that was planned. We lose our momentum. Situations come in our life with our family, our kids, our husband, our jobs, and stop us completely from receiving what God wanted we were going towards. This spirit leads to seduction. It allures you away from the path of promise through worry and trouble because of a victim mentality. It seeks to derail your path of promise through isolation. Gideon was hiding in the wine press. There again, we saw isolation in so many of these things. It steals momentum, harvests multiplication, finances, and it seeks to cause you to start over again, over again, over again. And you never fully get the the fullness of your destiny realized you never get the fullness of the multiplication of the harvest that God wants to bring to you. The antidote is developing a mindset for multiplication. It also is about refusing to surrender your forward movement when troubles, as I just said earlier, pop up into your life. It happens every time, right before you're about to see a breakthrough in harvest. Then we stop to do with whatever problem is and we lose momentum. So I declare that all the seeds that you planted of time, of talents, of finances, 
that you're going to, they're going to sprout and they're going to manifest a mighty increase. I decree, decree breakthroughs and miracles. The fullness of who God created you to be is going to come forth. If you were partner with the Holy Spirit, with the vengeance of God, with God, our avenger. It's not, it doesn't happen automatically. Many people are in need of a repositioning in their lives for increase. The Lord is releasing supernatural empowerment to bring a new dimension of grace in your life so you can reap a mighty harvest for yourself in God's kingdom. So I've been talking about our portion. It's threefold. Number one, we have to pull down strongholds and cast down imaginations. We gotta remember, People aren't our enemy, it's demonic forces. Read and meditate 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 6. Second thing we have to do is get into a place of praise. 2 Chronicles 20, Psalms 149, Psalms 8. High praise. Then wait and watch God's vengeance work. <laughs> the number one weapon to silence the enemy coming against you, and the avenger is praise. Psalms 8-2b says, This kind of praise has the power to shut Satan's mouth. Childlike worship will silence the madness of those who oppose you. The Passion Translation. The New American Standard Bible says, Because of your enemies, that you may silence the enemy and the avenger. Praise causes the enemy and the avenger if you study the word avenger out in the scriptures, avenger was people who were sent to kill those who murdered people on purpose. It takes life. That's what avenger is after. It's after life. Study Psalms 149. It's very important. Number three, the third thing you and I must do to partner with God in this time is we need to understand that the angelic hosts will work with us as we release our high praise, our proclamations, and our decrees. They take those words, they take that worship, and they go out and they begin to work to cause things to happen for us. We see that in Psalms 103, 20. Bless the Lord, you his angels, who excel in strength, who do his word, heeding the voice of his word. Now earlier, the Lord gave me a prophetic word to release over you at the end. And here is the prophetic word that the Lord gave me for you today. See, God reveals all these things so that we can be healed, so that we can be healed and come forth into the fullness of who he created us to be, to be authentically you. Holy Spirit said, quote, I call you out of isolation, out of the caves. It's time for David's mighty men to come forth. My people have been laid siege to, and I have come today to take vengeance on these demonic forces. As of today, May the 20th, 2022, my people are being released from the grip of besiegement. It's now up to you to walk out of blindness, isolation, pride, oppression, and these demonic forces that have held you captive. Come forth out of the caves. It's your time to arise, shine with my glory, and see the fullness of your destinies realized. Know this. You cannot fulfill your destiny on your own. I created a body and each part has its place. Without one part, the body does not function properly. You are needed and you must align with others. Come forth, come out of isolation. My church is being built by my son, Yeshua, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. I have arisen. This is the Lord talking, the Father. I am taking a stand against these forces. I am your avenger and will bring recompense for the years the locust has stolen from you. I am taking vengeance upon these demonic spirits that have kept my people separated and isolated from my kingdom's cause. So arise, come forth with fresh eyes because today is not yesterday. Today is the first day of the rest of your life of fulfillment says the Spirit of the Sovereign Lord. Amen? Beloved, I want to leave you with one scripture from the Passion Translation, Romans 12, 19. Beloved, 
Don't be obsessed with taking revenge, but leave that to God's righteous justice. For the Spirit says, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. I bless you in the name of Yeshua. Until tomorrow, next week, this is Sharon.